I was just walking home in like plain sight of everybody. And I feel the, the nip like on my ankle, like that, like my leg was moving and it bit me. The last time we spoke with Amena Bustillo, she was recovering from being bitten by a fox on Capitol Hill. At the time, Jimena was a reporter working for Politico, not used to being the big story being covered by Capitol correspondents. Well, these days, Jimena is still a reporter, now working for NPR, and she's covering perhaps the biggest story of a generation. For the first time, a former president is facing felony charges for paying hush money to an adult film star. Donald Trump has called it legal expenses paid through an attorney. The Manhattan District Attorney calls it election interference. And just four years removed from being a BSU student, Jimena Bustillo is calling in her reports from court every day and sharing those stories with Andrew Bartline. No one is above the law. A dichotomy in our democracy USA. is playing out in real time outside a lower Manhattan courthouse because on the inside, it's an unprecedented criminal case. It is the first ever criminal case against a sitting or former U.S. president. And Jimena Bustillo. I graduated in 2020 from Boise State. Has a front row seat. I'm a politics reporter over at NPR. It's a little bit of happenstance of right time, right place. <laughs> Whereas former President Trump is accused of the opposite. 34 felon counts and they all really boiled down to 11 hush money payments that were given to adult film actor Stormy Daniels. What exactly are the allegations? What are they saying the former president did? And the allegations are that Trump was worried that any sort of scandal regarding infidelity in his marriage. Hi, everyone. Uh, specifically with an adult film star could turn voters away in November 2016. They were labeled as legal retainers, but for tax purposes, that might have been incorrect. So the question about election interference and labeling for taxes. And by New York law, the president must be in court every day of the trial. He is very open to coming and talking at us um, when we're in the hall. Sometimes that means literally being louder. Sometimes that means outlasting everyone and asking the question. You have to know exactly what you're going to ask, how you're going to ask it in a way that will trigger a response. It's making for some unique interactions. At the end of the day, I was finally like, where are you going after this? And he walked out and he's like, I'm going to a, bit, a bodega, but you know about that, right? And I was like, what are you going to order? And he didn't answer that one. <laughs> Maybe because the former president wasn't hitting up the sea store in Harlem for a bite, but rather to campaign in the November election. He is always reminding us that this is its own form of election interference. At least that's what he's alleging because he cannot be traveling every day, making all these other campaign stops because he does have to be in court Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. The campaign is definitely a really big part of this trial. And a big building block in a blossoming career that still remembers the days of budding. I see it on your wall. You have an Idaho Press Club award past your shoulder. I do. <laughs> You're not forgetting where you came from. That's pretty cool. But I think it just kind of goes to show what the possibilities and the options are, even if you don't come from a background of, um, you know, really high socioeconomics, um, if you don't have a very fancy degree from a top tier journalism school, I always say that my best degree has been my political science degree in covering politics. Jimena adds she's covered multiple civil trials involving the former president. She says they can go long, and they often do. In this case, they're still in jury selection, and in total, Trump is facing 88 state and federal charges across the country. That can be easy to confuse them, but the distinction here, Brian, this is a criminal trial. Right. That's what makes this so unprecedented for a former president, even a sitting president, hasn't happened before. Did she explain kind of what the vibe is in that courtroom? I mean, he's friendly enough to talk to him. He's yeah. joking. Well, I guess it wasn't a joke. He literally was going to a bodega to, to campaign. campaign at a that was not store. a joke. That's actually what he was doing there. Um, it, it seems that there is an amicable relationship between the press and them, but um, yeah, it's a very serious situation. All right. Well, campaigning at a convenience store probably better than showing up at the Four Seasons. Better than not campaigning at all. That's true. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Uh -huh.